We will next hear a selection from Jay Kegge's Dead Man Walking. It's an opera, as you know, about a man on death row. Unlike Billy Budd, Joseph DeRoche, the condemned man, has indeed done a terrible thing. But his mother asks in a moving aria, what does killing him accomplish? Some context before Lion Center artist Annie Rosen returns to portray Mrs. De Roche. On June 29th, the last opinion announcement day of the Supreme Court's 2014 to 2015 term, the court upheld lethal injection as currently compounded as a permissible means of carrying out executions. The vote was five to four. I joined Justice Breyer's separate dissent, which addressed a more basic question, whether the death penalty, whatever the means employed, is itself unconstitutional. What had experience showed since 1976, when after a four-year hiatus, the court allowed states to reinstate the death penalty. Justice Breyer listed four considerations worthy of the court's consideration. First, reliability or accuracy. Post-1976, post more than 100 individuals convicted of capital crimes and sentenced to death were later fully exonerated. The state had it fastened on the wrong man. Some of the exonerations came years after the executions took place. Second, arbitrariness. Factors that should not affect imposition of the death penalty, studies have documented, often do. Prime among those factors, race and geography. Third, a matter of time. The average execution in the United States occurs some 18 years after the individual was sentenced to death. Much of the reason for the long delays is the multiple opportunities for appeals available to prisoners sentenced to death. So delay might be regarded as a self-inflicted wound. Yet conditions during the wait can be cruel, especially if waiting time is spent in solitary confinement. But what is the alternative to delay? Last year, a man on death row was exonerated by DNA evidence after spending 30 years on death row. If his sentence had been carried out swiftly, or in 10 or even 20 years, he would not have lived to know of his exoneration. Fourth, and perhaps in light of the first three considerations, the incidence of the death penalty has steeply declined. 19 states have abolished it, including most recently Nebraska, by ballot initiative, by popular vote. In 2014, only seven of our states conducted executions. In 43 states, there were none. And beyond that, the practice is largely confined to a small and diminishing subset of counties. Ultimately, the considerations Justice Breyer discussed at length may bring us back to the years 1972 to 1976 when no executions took place in the United States.